On May 25th, 2008, Parkersburg, Iowa was hit with the massive EF5 tornado that leveled half of the southern part of the city. And that's where we're at today. We're here in Parkersburg. We're gonna look around, see if we can find any remnants, see if we can find any ruins, um, look at how they've rebuilt. Cause it's a pretty small town. It's got a population of about 2000 and I should probably get out the street. So join me on this journey as we see how Parkersburg has rebuilt since the 2008 EF5 tornado. And right off the bat, we have a little mural, which is pretty sweet. Better together, recovery, resilience. So you can see, you got a tornado right there. And that's really what this town has become known for. If you look at Parkersburg on Google, a lot of it is about the tornado. A lot of it is about just the city rebuilding after the tornado because Parkersburg really did become a model city for regrowth. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna kind of walk the path and see what we can find. Now we are in downtown right now, which was not impacted by the tornado as the tornado hit the southern portion of the city. So you can refer to these images that I'm gonna put up right now to see the part of the city that was hit the most. So here's a satellite imagery of Parkersburg before the tornado. Note the green foliage throughout the town. And here's Parkersburg in October 2008, about five months afterwards. The tornado completely wiped out the southern portion of the town, most of it being EF4 damage. However, there was EF5 damage towards the eastern part of the city. You can use the curve on this road right here as a reference when comparing the photos to the satellite imagery. Overall, the tornado took the lives of nine people whose locations are marked on the map. It also injured close to 100 people. And the tornado did didn't just impact Parkersburg, it was actually over 40 miles long, going from west of Parkersburg all the way to the west of Fairbanks. So I'll be hopping on Google Earth throughout the video to kind of give you an idea of the specific location we are located in and the damage that we are looking at. What we're going to do is we're actually going to walk part of the street that entered into the path and you're going to see a big difference in the trees, the, the buildings, the homes, everything's a lot newer. Even look at this window, we got a, we got a cow cow up in that window. Very cool, very neat. Our current location is on 3rd Street on the edge of the tornado's path, walking south. Well, right now we are walking and we're coming up on the tornado's path. So we're not in the path yet, we're on the edge of the path. And as you can see, the trees are a little bit older, the homes are a little bit older. So here's the old part of the town. Then quickly things change. You got old homes behind me and you got new homes coming up right away. So new homes, newer trees, smaller trees. You can have a few empty lots. I, I lived through the tornado. Yeah, and you and, were. Uh, uh, I made it through that one, but I don't want to try another one. <laughs> uh, I, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> One's enough. One is enough. And you lived I over. I story I want to yeah. tell you about the tornado. See, from that house, that was the last house standing, that big right. one. Yeah. With the front porch? Nice that front porch. That was the last house. Wow. And then everything from that point on is yeah. small everything trees, new homes. Was gone. Wow. Plus, I mean flattened. It just like it was pushing me first. And then all of a sudden my feet left the ground and I just kind of, kind of moved horizontal. Right until it decided to well, it then, let then, me down easy. Right. Well, then you were kind of unconscious. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you forgot about that part. Yeah. And I lit on my knees, you know, yeah. not a bruise. And, uh, it took three big walnuts out. Yeah. Wow. And that one lit and it missed the house by about that much. Wow. And uh, but it was about that far above my head. Because wow. when I got up, uh, and lo and behold, it knocked, I had a window air conditioner, and it knocked that off the house, the tree branches. And laying on top of that air conditioner was a prayer book, a Lutheran prayer book. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God was with you there. Right? Yeah, absolutely. My friend, Mary, and her husband, they went to the basement. And after it was all over, he got out. The house was gone. They couldn't go back up the steps and get out. And he went out a window of the basement. And then he said, oh, Mary, you won't believe this. 
I'll help you out the window. And she said, I'm barefoot. Oh. And he said, well, give me a bolt cushion. I'll help you out. You can stand on it. So she says, I get out and I'm standing there and I'm looking and there aren't houses and trees are gone or bent and there's a truck around a tree over here. And as I start looking down and I look on the ground, right in front of me, about three feet, are my flip-flops, both of them. She said, they don't weigh any more than a feather and both of them were right there. She would put her rings in the bedside table in the drawer at night and the bedside table was gone of course everything was gone and when they did find the bedside table part of it her rings were still in the drawer wow well nice <laughs> so you know twice she had you might say a miracle on right flip-flops and the rings wasn't in the picture somewhere right he was there he was oh, watching yeah. over most definitely nice meeting you nancy it's and nice wendell. You wendell yeah all right, Keep well, it up. so Wendell said that this house right here was just slightly damaged, but insurance was able to cover it, and so they got a brand new house. But this house coming up right here is the kind of the last house standing before the uh, path and all the destruction. So this is the oldest house right here. And thankfully it made it through because it's a nice little Victorian kind of thing going on. But even right here, you have just an empty lot where a home once stood. And I'll refer to some locations on Google Earth so you can see where we are at. But that was the location of a home. On Google Earth, the last house standing is right here. And that is indeed an empty lot that was previously occupied by a house before the storm. Now we're in the newer part of Parkersburg and as you can see, it's a much different vibe. Trees are way smaller, homes are way newer. You know, still nice. It's always good to recover. And the rebuilding process looks like it's been going really well. But right now we're almost directly towards the center of the path, getting really close to it. There's a lot of empty lots. You can even see like right here, there's probably a house between these two houses. And now it's just an empty green space that one of the homes next to them purchased. A couple trees did survive though. I mean, that big tree over there definitely survived. Even in this new area, I see this massive tree here that looks like it could have been you know a victim of the tornado not 100 percent sure but definitely appears to be that lots of green space i mean these were all houses at one point and now it's just an empty green lot but right here was the location of a fatality and a driveway to nowhere so there are many empty lots in the area that we are looking at here's what the same street looked like back in 2007 and you can really see it well back in 1994 Coming up right here, you have another abandoned driveway. You can still see part of the foundation too, it looks like it's kind of a gravelly area, but right here, there was another house. So we'll keep walking, because I see a few other abandoned driveways coming up. I'll show you those as well. We're a little bit further to the east right now um, from where we were, but we're definitely coming up on what appears to be a foundation, a remnant from the tornado. We have an abandoned driveway right here. And then, looks like just, you know, an old foundation right here. Who knows if that was part of the, uh, part of the chimney or I don't know what that was part of, but we got this whole little lot over here and you'll find a lot of these driveways to nowhere throughout Parkersburg they've done a great job rebuilding but there is still some ruins some remnants left but this is definitely the location of looks like a garage probably I would guess and you can even see the corner of the uh, corner of the building right there now this was a low-grade EF5 still an EF5 with the winds over 200 miles per hour, close to maybe 210 miles per hour. But, yeah. So, there's still some remnants here, still some scars from the, from the past, from the tornado. 
But we're going to move on. We're going to move a little bit out of the city to New Hartford because New Hartford was also hit by the tornado. Well, parts out in the country were. So we're going to go look at that. And there's also a bit of forest that I want to go to. There was an empty lot right here that I was going to film, but it looks like they actually are rebuilding something. So that's always good to see. Like in the path. In the path. More empty lots. But everything is, you know, half of this town is brand new. Is you really have an old town and a new town. And there's a fine line and that's the edge of the tornado. It also went through a little path of forest that we're gonna go check out to see if we can see the new tree growth versus the old tree growth. So this is the specific area of forest that we are heading to. It's situated right between Parkersburg and New Hartford. If we do a before and after, you can clearly see the tree damage done by the tornado. So there's just huge empty space of forest that was completely wiped out. We're over here by the Parkersburg co-op and there's still some rubble, probably not from the tornado, but you never know. Anyway, we're gonna go into some woods here and see if we can find more evidence of the path. There's a cemetery here, so it's gotta be somewhat private. The Codell Cemetery. It's got this white picket fence. Still kind of walking back in the woods here, trying to find the new tree growth versus the old tree growth. But right here is a little creek. So I probably won't be able to go over there, but I wonder if you can find some debris back here too. Maybe in the winter time, we'll come back to look for debris. Yeah, and you do have some newer trees, smaller trees versus the old tree growth. but trees are a little bit smaller. I mean, it's been 15 years, so a lot of it has grown back and there is a lot of, uh, a lot of foliage around here. But this right here, these railroad tracks were right in the path of the tornado as well. So there might be some damage from the tornado on those, on those tracks, on that bridge. New tree growth. And then the old tree growth would be over there. And these uh, silos right here were also destroyed by the tornado. All right, I just want to hop on real quick for some clarity. I'm standing right here looking at this direction. And as you can see, that's just complete forest right there. But now today, the trees are gone. So looking at this photo, this view would have been completely obstructed by trees. And me looking straight ahead, all those trees, those are newer and younger trees compared to the trees near the cemetery. So you can see these trees right here were completely wiped out. And even though they look pretty big, even though they don't look like they're small new trees, it's been about 15 years. So there's been some major growth between the time of now and the tornado. I think this tree fell down from the tornado, Jake? <laughs> say it, <laughs> say you never know. You never know, I mean, you never know though. Interestingly enough, they did find um, some papers from the Parkersburg Bank up in Wisconsin. So debris could have gone pretty far. I mean, obviously paper can go further, but that doesn't mean that there's a couple appliances or fridges out in the middle of the woods from that tornado. Couldn't find any today. But in the wintertime when everything is dead and you can see a lot more stuff and there's less mosquitoes and bugs, perhaps we'll come back and check it out. There actually wasn't too much damage done in the town of New Hartford as the tornado just barely dodged it to the north. However, that doesn't mean that people weren't impacted. In fact, there were a few fatalities near New Hartford and even a few foundations left by the storm. Well, there you have it. That concludes our trip through Parkersburg, Iowa. We saw some remnants. We saw some uh, scars from the tornado. And right over there is Parkersburg. But as you can see, Butler County is now storm ready. Now you don't see this on every county. This is kind of a unique to Butler County situation because of what they went through in 2008. But this could happen to you. This could happen to anyone in the future. So make sure you're like Butler County and you are storm ready. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.